we're talking about um, denominations of thousands of units. Uh, supply point B can supply 55, supply point C can supply 65. At the bottom of every column, uh, you have the demand for that particular demand point. So in this case, demand point 1 has a demand of 50, demand point 2 has a demand of 40, demand point 3 has a demand of 30, and demand point 4 has a demand of 55. The cells in the table itself are meant to show you the flow as well as the cost of transportation between those points. Um, so that's typically done by showing you the cost in a smaller cell. Uh, underneath that, you will have the flow associated with that supply and demand point. Um, so in this case, what we're saying is it costs $15 per unit of transportation from source A to sink 1 or from supply point A to demand point 1. Similarly, it costs $20 per unit of transportation from supply point B to demand point 2. Um, the flow, once you have determined how many items are going to be supplied, is going to be shown to you underneath the cost cell within that overall um, cell between uh, the supply point and the demand point. The other notation uh, is a transportation graph or a graph diagram, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, it uses supply points and demand points as vertices or nodes in the diagram. So you have three vertices or three nodes for your supply points, and you have four vertices or four nodes for your demand points. Um, underneath each of those vertices or nodes, you're given the actual demand or supply that's possible out of those points. Um, if we're talking about a supply point, typically the supply is shown to you in negative. So what we're saying over here is that supply point A can supply 55 units, supply point B can supply 55 units, and supply point C can supply 65. Um, on the other hand, in terms of the demand points, demand point one has a requirement or demand for 50 units, and demand point three, for example, has a demand for 30 units. Uh, along the arcs or along the edges on that diagram, whatever you want to call them, uh, you're also shown the cost of transportation per unit of uh, transportation. So it costs you 50 units to transport materials or products from supply point A to demand point 1. Similarly, it costs $20 uh, per unit of transportation from supply point B to demand point 2, so on and so forth. So that's the second notation that is very commonly used in transportation problems. All right, so now that we know how these problems are depicted in a transportation grid or a transportation graph, we can start talking about how you solve for these problems. We are going to use this as an example uh, for the next little while, uh, and we're going to use various approaches to solve this problem. Um, so we have a transportation grid in front of us. We have three supply points, A, B, and C. Uh, we also have four demand points, in this case D, E, F, and G. Uh, we're given the cost of transportation from these supply points to these demand points. That's what's being shown in the smaller cells to you. Um, what we need to do in this case is determine how many units we're going to transport between specific supply points and demand points. In terms of the constraints for this problem, you're given the maximum supply that is possible out of each and every supply point. So supply point A has a maximum supply possible of 50 units or 50,000 units, whatever the denomination is. Um, supply point B has a total capacity or has the ability to supply four units. Um, and supply point C has the capacity to supply 75 units. Uh, similarly, at the bottom of every column, you're also given the demand um, or the requirements for those demand points. So 50, 60, 25, and 30 units are required at demand points D, E, F, and G. Um, in this particular problem, if you notice, our total demand is equal to total supply. And this is an example of a balanced transportation problem where the demand is equal to the supply. So we don't have to worry about uh, an instance where one of our demand points might fall short of what its requirements are. So in a problem like this, it's pretty simple to solve because we do not have a situation where either the supply is shorter uh, or 
uh, lesser than the demand, uh, or uh, there might be specific supply points that might have excess supply. Um, before we actually try to find the optimum solution for this problem, though, uh, I am going to show you two heuristic approaches or manual procedures which you could use to find a feasible solution to this problem. It's not the optimum solution, a feasible solution, though. So that's a starting point uh, in case you did not have access to Excel Solver, for example, or any other tools to find an optimum solution. There are other manual procedures that you can use, and some of these are very, very simple to use. Uh, two which I am going to demonstrate to you are the Northwest Corner Rule uh, and the Intuitive Lowest Cost Method, which is also sometimes referred to as the greedy heuristic because you're trying to be greedy and um, save as much as possible. Uh, so let's look at those two heuristic approaches first. In the Northwest Corner Rule, uh, as the name suggests, what we want to do or the procedure that we need to follow is that we start at the northwest corner or the top uh, left side of our table and try to fill in the cells from left to right, top to bottom. So that is the objective or that is the procedure that you're going to follow um, to try to find a solution for this problem. So it's a very simple uh, rule to follow. Um, it will take a little bit of practice the first couple of times you work with this. So I will post um, the animation for what I'm doing right now online as well so that you could go through it step by step and see what actually is happening. So uh, let's do this. And uh, we are going to start with the top left-hand cell, which is from A to B. Uh, so the way you're going to read this information is that D, for example, requires 50 units. A can supply 50 units, so that's fine. Um, so what we can do is we can satisfy all of the demand for D from A. So we're going to supply 50 units. That actually is going to exhaust the supply out of A. And it's also going to satisfy all of the requirement for D. So I'm just going to cross those um, demand, demand and supply uh, numbers off so that we know that we've taken care of it already. Um, moving on, the next cell is A to E, uh, but again, A has exhausted all its supply, so we can actually skip over the row because we know that it cannot supply any more units to E, F, or G in this case. Moving on to the second row, uh, the first cell is from B to D. However, D does not require any more units. All of its uh, requirements have been satisfied from A in our previous step. So this cell we do not have to worry about. B to D we do not have to worry about. Uh, move on to the next cell, which is from B to E. Again, uh, read the information that's available to you. E requires 60 units. Uh, B can supply 40 units. Uh, so even though we're not going to be able to satisfy all of the demand for E, B can certainly supply 40 out of the 60 units that are required. So let's do that. Um, so now we've supplied 40 units out of B, which exhausts the supply from B. However, we have not satisfied all of the requirements for E just yet, so we cannot really cross off uh, the demand number for E. Uh, but keep in mind that we've already supplied 40 out of the 60 that are required, so E needs 20 more. Uh, moving on to the next cell, uh, that's from B to F. However, B has exhausted all its supply. Similarly, uh, from B to G, we can't do anything because B has exhausted uh, its supply. Uh, next row is from C to D. Uh, D does not require any more units. We've uh, already satisfied the demand for that point, so move on. From C to E, uh, C can supply 75. We haven't touched the supply for C yet. Uh, e still requires 20 more units. It required 60, but we've already supplied 40, so it needs 20, which can be supplied by C. So let's do that. Um, and that will take care of the demand requirements for E. So now we've satisfied the requirement for E at this point. Uh, move on to the next cell, which is from C to F. We haven't touched F yet. Uh, F requires 25 units. C uh, had the capacity for 75, out of which we've already used 20. So we still have 55 units that we can supply. So uh, we will supply the 25 that are required at F, which will take care of all the requirements for F. Now uh, we're left with 30 units that C can supply because C had original capacity of 75, and we've supplied 25 and 20. 
So 30 still remain. And uh, luckily in our case, G requires 30 and C has those 30 units. So we can supply those 30 units, take care of the demand for G, and we've also now exhausted the supply from supply point C. So uh, that basically completes our solution. Uh, we've actually satisfied all of the demand for the various points and we've exhausted all our supply. This was again a case where supply was equal to demand, so this was a balanced problem, so you would have had to uh, exhaust all of your supply from various points in order to meet the requirements at the various demand points. Um, so that's your solution then. What we are seeing then is that A is going to supply 50 units to D, B is going to supply 40 units to E, uh, C is going to supply 20 units to E, uh, 25 to F, and 30 to G. Also, the cost of transportation per unit is given to you, so it's going to cost you 50 times $9 uh, for the transportation between A and D. It's going to cost you 40 times 8 for the transportation between B and E, and same thing for C to E, C to F, and C to G. So your overall cost of the solution then is simply uh, the sum product of flows and costs. We've talked about sum product in the previous class, which is just a way in Excel to multiply two uh, different arrays of numbers together. So in this case, what we are trying to do is multiply uh, 50 times 9 plus 40 times 8 plus 20 times 3 plus 25 times 3 plus 30 times 10. So in Excel, you could do that very easily if you had two different rows uh, or columns, one with your flows and one with your costs. You can multiply those together and take the product using some product. So your overall cost of transportation in this case is 1205. Uh, so that is our cost of transportation using the Northwest Corner Rule, which is one of the heuristics or one of the manual procedures or simple ways that you could use to come up with a feasible solution to the problem. Not the optimum again, just a feasible solution to the problem itself. So this should give you a little bit of an idea of a heuristic approach to a transportation problem. It's a simple procedure that can be used to come up with a feasible solution. Another example of this uh, problem that we're going to see, uh, or another example of a procedure that I'm going to show you is the intuitive lowest cost method, or the greedy heuristic. And in this procedure, we are interested in explicitly taking into account the cost of transportation from various supply points to various demand points, and choosing the option that costs us the least. And we're hoping that by doing that, the overall cost of transportation is going to be lesser uh, than what we've seen in our previous approach. Uh, the procedure to follow for this uh, heuristic is that from the various options that are available to you in your transportation grid, you're going to choose a cell that has the lowest cost among all the other cells, and you're going to try and put the maximum flow of materials or products in that cell. So in this grid, for example, we have various cells with uh, different costs. So uh, for uh, transportation from C to E, for example, it costs you $3, while transporting from C to D costs you $5. Uh, so what you're going to try to do is, if you have the option between those two scenarios, you would try and maximize the transportation from C to E, as opposed to from C to D. Um, so you start with the lowest possible cost uh, that you have in the grid at that point in time. So let's get started then. Uh, in this example, we actually have a cell which has a cost of zero associated with it, uh, and that is from B to G. Um, so you have a supply point B and a demand point G, and the cost of transportation between those two points is actually zero dollars. If you're wondering why or how that is possible, um, this might be a scenario where you have a warehouse location and that warehouse location also acts as a retail, retail outlet. Uh, so if that is the type of scenario we're talking about, then yes, our cost of transportation uh, is going to be very low or uh, zero dollars uh, as compared to the other cost of transportation. So we are going to try to fill out that cell first or allocate the maximum uh, number of units to that 